activity-based costing for A-level accounting. To try and introduce this idea, we're going to do a little activity, a role-playing scenario. Imagine that you have a business, and in this business, you make three different products. For now, we'll call them A, B, and C, although you're welcome to use your imagination to create any products you choose. I now want you to think about the fact of what you would do if you receive an invoice for 10,000 Rand for 20 advertisements that were placed. 8 for product A, 7 for product B, and 5 for product C. How much does each advertisement cost? Well, quite simply, you can have a look at the fact that you are being charged 10,000 Rand in total and 20 advertisements were placed. This means that each ad would actually have cost 500 Rand. If this is the case, what cost should you then allocate to product A? Well, if each ad costs 500 Rand and product A had eight advertisements that were placed, that means that obviously 4,000 Rand is attributable to product A. If you were going to allocate your costs to each product, you could then allocate 4,000 Rand of this amount to product A. So what we've done over here was we've taken the advertising cost and we've allocated it to each product according to the activity that was done. This is known as activity-based costing. Usually, however, it is a little bit more complex as you wouldn't usually necessarily know what the price per activity was. For example, if you got an advertising bill of 20,000 Rand, but you had no idea how many ads this was for. Perhaps it was billed on the number of hours. Perhaps it was billed on the fact that it just was an advertising campaign for this particular period. However, it is still possible to look at the ratio of the product's usage of that cost to the total cost. Or if we consider product A, where there were eight advertisements compared to the total number of all the ads of products A, B, and C, which were in fact 20 if you added them together, then you could use that ratio of 8 over 20 or one-fifth to know how much of the cost you want to actually allocate to product A. It is a more complicated way of costing, but it is certainly more accurate. You would need to consider for your particular business how detailed do you want to be and how accurate should your costs be. So, overhead costs are not usually direct, directly related to any product, and we actually know this by definition. Um, when we looked at our original direct costs of raw materials and labor, the reason that we allocated them as direct costs was quite simply the fact that you could allocate them directly to a particular product. However, this is not always the case when you are dealing with overheads, because although you can consider what role the product played in the generation of that cost, you can't actually see that cost in the finished product. However, it is possible to apportion the costs to the activity um, or to the product or process by the activity. In other words, how many times did you actually use that particular cost item? The activity is known as the cost driver. In our scenario, the eight advertisements that were placed for product A are the activity or the cost driver for the cost pool of product A. So how do we do these calculations? What you're going to do to determine the cost driver rate is take the total cost of that overhead, in our case it was 20,000 Rand, and divide it by the total number of times that an activity was performed. Product A was eight times, and then you could add that to products B and C to get the total of 20 times, even if you're not told that 20 ads were placed. The overhead cost per product 
will then be the 500 rand in our case that we worked out as the cost driver rate times the number of times for that particular product or in our case times 8 and that's how we got the um, 4,000 rand total overhead for that product. You can then work out your total product cost by taking your direct costs and adding your overhead costs for the product. You can either do this in total, in other words saying what was the total production cost for product A, or you can say what was the total production cost for that particular unit, um, so one item of that product. The selling price is then going to be the total product cost um, per unit, obviously, times your 100% plus your markup. And in this way, you would be able to consider your total product cost for product A for each particular unit that was produced by obviously looking at how many units of A were produced. And then you can work out a unit selling price that is much more realistic.